This video is going to be a good one. And you know when I say that, you're going to want to watch the whole thing. In this video, we're going to go back to an old method that I used to talk about, but with a huge update. And this is really, really cool. Basically, I've been doing some client work and I'm trying to optimize writing for other people's websites. But this works if you're writing for your website or other people's website. It doesn't matter. You may or may not know that I like to create contextually relevant relevant articles and the way that I normally do that is I get a list of internal links from my sitemap and then I feed that to ChatGPT and I get ChatGPT to write an article. If you want to know how to find keywords, if you want to know how to make a, an AdSense website that is currently making me money, for example, then feel free to watch the playlist that this video is a part of. Let's get straight into the video. We're going to be using Harper AI in this video. Now, Harper AI does use ChatGPT 3.5 API as far as I'm aware. So I think it's paid, but like it's it's pretty cheap to use the uh, OpenAI for 3.5 anyway. You can use GPT-4 for this if you really want to, but I actually prefer to use GPT-3.5. Now, what is the process here? We're going to be using Two Men as an example. Two Men is a website that I created for my boss, and it's like a secondary website. It's like a sister website for the main business. Now, let's do site two men dot it. What this does is it shows me any and all pages. Well, not really all anymore. It just shows me some pages that are indexed on Google. But what I've noticed is that it actually puts it in some kind of order. So if, if you look here, these are actually pretty good pages at the beginning. So you do site 2 men dot and you can see it's coming up with a lot of my main pages. There's not a lot of crap here. And generally, I, ha I am of the opinion that Google does this um, in like a way where it gives the most important things first. So what I can do is I can do like entitled sneaker, for example, or sneakers. And let's say I want to write an article about sneakers. So now I have all of these pages, which I know are pages that I want to basically rank on Google. So if you don't want products, for example, you can do in URL and then minus product. I believe that should work or products. Or you can do not in URL, sorry, and then products. Okay, that took way longer than expected. But basically, you can do in title sneakers, and then you can try collections or blogs if you're on Shopify, for example. You'll have to work out how this works exactly for your website, but basically just look at the URL and try and find anything that is relevant just for what you want to write about. A lot of people want to write about their products, which is fine. So let's write, let's just write an article without that. But I just wanted to mention that you can make it very specific. So let's just do in title and then we'll do suits, for example. So we have 26 results. We have kits on suits, men's suits. These are all the perfect internal links that I would very much like to drive traffic to. So what we can do is we can go on Harper AI and we can say, using this prompt that I have made, we can say, write, uh, write an article about best Italian suit brands for men. Use the pages here as a base. Make sure to write an SEO optimized article with good formatting and also include relevant internal links formatted, for example, like this. And then I've given an example, which I hope it can read. And yeah, we'll see what happens. So yeah, we can see it's doing all the internal links. It's doing everything for us. I think this might be one of the fastest ways to write content that has basically everything inside it except uh, images. What I normally do here, uh, just so you know, in case this is one of the first videos of mine that you've seen, is I go to Markdown's HTML and I remove anything that shouldn't be here, but it looks like everything is fine here. This is a very short article. Um, so what you could do is use this as a base. This is something I've been doing for client work. Use this as a base inside the playground and say something like, can you extend this article a bit? And then just press submit, for example, if you want to just get it a little bit longer. I wouldn't even say it was necessary though, because sometimes short, punchy articles rank better on Google. So yeah. We're already pretty much there. What I like to do is I like to get the raw HTML. Let's go on to Shopify. So this is relevant also for WordPress, but this is just how I do it on Shopify. Um, we now have the HTML, so I can put it directly here. You would obviously delete this title and just have one H1 title, which would be here. 
so we can delete this and then we're pretty much done what I personally like to do is I like to go to my apps and go to Hura collection embedder and we can see Kiton, so I would get Kiton's suit collection like this. Let's put it back in HTML. Let's go Kiton. And then I've got to look for Kiton suits, but my titles are all a bit messed up. No, we're fine. And then get code. You can do this somehow on WordPress as well. I just don't, I haven't really looked at it because no one's asked me to. Um, and then you just control V and that adds the collection right here. And then I normally just make a featured image on Canva quickly using the millions of photos that we have online. And I like to shorten the URL. So best Italian suit brands for men 2023, something like this. And then we're pretty much done already, to be honest. I put this on the journal because we decided at the beginning of the company that the name would be journal for the blog. I would add the other embeds and then I would put visible and save it and that's pretty much done. So what this does is it allows you to make super, super relevant content to your website, to your brands, to your products that has everything inside. It has image, images of products and everything. And it's very, very quick this way. And this is only just, this is just one example. You can give it your own keyword as well. So let's say I wanted to write an article about um, I don't know, a keyword that I found online, like modern suit brands or modern suit cuts or whatever, I could just add that to Harper AI. Now I'll leave this in the description um, if anyone wants to use this prompt for Harper AI. And another thing about Harper is there are a couple of very, very interesting things that if people want me to look in more detail, I'd be very, very happy to. But basically they have this, which looks like it might be a Google monitor which means you could do something like when X happens, like a website posts an article, you could set up some kind of automation to do something, okay? So now I, don't, I haven't looked too much into this, but this does look very, very interesting to me. And it might be a way to build a tool, it might be a way to do, you know, whatever it might be. And then finally, the thing about Harper AI is that you can connect it to um, Claude, I think, I believe, although it also has GPT-4, Code Interpreter, and GPT-4 plugins. I think I have seen Claude somewhere. There it is. Claude Browser Sessions. So yeah, if you want to get even longer content, we could potentially use Claude. I might save that for another video. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. I really wanted to make this video because it makes this, this kind of method so much easier and so much quicker and helps you kind of drive more traffic to the most important pages on your website or the most important pages on a client's website. Because if you're coming from the outside and you don't know about a client's website, this is one of the most difficult things to do. So this is a really, really good way to get around that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. And as usual, peace out.